Hi everyone and welcome back to Imagination Arts. I'm Tanya with Imagination Arts and in this video today we will be going back to the kitten piece that I did a few weeks ago and finishing up the fish bowl and the fish in that in that piece. I will be going over some things that I'm doing kind of walking you through as I'm working on the fish bowl as well as pointing out some things that um, some mistakes that I made uh, on the fishbowl and maybe hopefully you'll pick something up and you'll learn from it and you uh, it will help you out in pieces that you may be working on or in the future so that you will make the mistakes that I made. And with that, let's get to the video. Okay, so first I'm just using my light blue pencil and I'm going in and putting in the highlights for the water and the edges of the fish bowl here, and laying in the 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 reflective uh, parts of the fish bowl. I'm just continuing to put down those highlights for the to give it that that uh, look of glass. And the blue tint gives it the look of having water. And again, I'm using a reference, my reference photo and looking at it, stopping and pausing to look to see where I need to put these at, not just going in and putting them wherever I uh, think they should go. I'm looking at my reference photo and checking it and seeing where I need to put it. Again, now I've got my white pencil and I'm going in with it and putting in those highlights on the glass to where the glass is really reflecting light. Putting in all of those reflections, putting in some hints of reflections off of the water. Just places where the light is hitting. Now I'm taking my water pen and going in and just blending that out. And see, you see here with the with things like glass when you have your background already filled in like I did but with the cat previously it's not such a big deal because then it uh, it's you should be able to see what's behind the glass fish bowl because it's transparent and you can see through it but everything should be slightly blurred due to the water in the in the glass of the fish bowl Again, taking that white pencil and going in and putting in those highlights again now that I've blended it out. Again, continuing to look at my reference photo and check it to see where it shows these highlights are at. Again, there, checking my reference photo, looking at it, and then looking back at my picture to see where I need to add something or. Again, checking that reference photo, and I, I want to, I can't stress them enough. You must have a reference photo. You can't do. If you want things to look more realistic and to look real and to have a more a realistic look instead of a cartoony look to it, you need to have that reference photo to, to go by So, because if you're just trying to do it from memory and you just go in there and start laying stuff in, it's not going to look realistic. 
need to have that reference photo so that you can see exactly where those highlights need to be, where your darks need to be, where your lights need to be, how dark something needs to be. Now taking that water pen and starting to blend in that some more, trying to make that that background look more blurry through the glass bowl. Just trying to make sure that it has that water look to it. You don't want it to look like you've got blue uh, liquid in your bowl. You want it. You just want it to have a little bit of hint of color to it. And you want to have the surrounding color showing through it because water is reflective as well as glass and so they're all they're both going to have colors from whatever they're sitting near whatever their surroundings are Again, just continuing to take that water pen and blend that out. Trying to make it look as smooth as possible. Now taking that white pencil again and going in and really brightening up those highlights on that glass again. Now one of the thing, mistakes that I made on this, as I said before in the first video with the kitten, is when I went in and did the background first and then put the kitten and the fishbowl in on top of it. Now the mistake, it worked, it wound up working out with the kitten that the background did not have an effect on the kitten. However, one of the other mistakes that I made with uh, putting this image down is that I used a dark transfer paper to transfer my image onto the background so that I could see it and which causes, caused it to have those dark lines in the fishbowl that would not blend out. And so you want to, when you're doing something like this, you, especially for something that is going to have a reflective or transparency to it, you don't want to use a dark uh, transfer paper. You either want to use a white or a um, water-soluble graphite, so that way that it will blend out and not show these dark lines through the, through the glass. And just zooming in on it a little more now, fixing to start working on the fish and the artificial plant in the fishbowl. Getting it all ready and set up. And I'm just beginning to fill in that grass with that light green. And I want to, you always want to start with your light colors and build up because it's easier to darken something up than it is to make it lighter. So you always want to start light and build up from there. Just continuing to use that light green pen pencil. And again, these are my Faber-Castell Art Grip Aqua Wella wa uh, watercolor pencils. And this is the light green. Just laying that color in there and then I will, once I have enough color on there then I will begin to blend it. And you want to put several layers down and you want to just continue 
putting layers on until you have your contrast and your dark your in your uh, brights bright enough and your darks dark enough. One of the things that I just can always that I always remember when I'm working on a piece is to remember to work on the on something until I have the darks dark enough and the lights light enough to where the contrast is is just right. So that now I always remember that from watching Lisa Lockery's videos. If you if you want, I'll have a vid a uh, card pop up pointing you to one of her videos where she is one of the people that I like to watch and learn from and pick up things from her because she's really good and she really has a lot to uh, offer and a lot of good advice and a lot of good work. Now beginning to blend that out with that water pen. Let that dry and go on and work on another area while that dries. Get out my hair dryer and let it cool and dry that. Now that it's dry, I'll go on there with a darker green. Get out that darker that dark green pencil. Just trying to get the camera and the board, the stabilized. Okay, sorry, I take that back. I guess I decided to work on the bowl some more, going in and darkening up some areas, putting, defining some edges of the bowl. Again, looked at my reference photo and saw that there were some darker areas on that fish bowl that needed to be brought in and added to some shadows. Coming in with that dark blue pencil and adding in those shadows on the bowl, fish bowl, and then coming back in again with my white pencil and redefining those highlights. Sorry about the part at the bottom being cut off. I didn't realize at the time that you couldn't see that part of the screen. There we go, I adjusted the camera. Going in and adding that leaf that I missed. Now I'm going in with that darker green pencil, as I said before, putting in the, the veins on the leaves and highlighting the areas that are darker. Again, not just going in there and putting these in here as I think they, as I think they should look. I'm looking at my reference photo, looking where the darks are, where the lights are, and going in and putting those in there. And then once I have that on there, I will blend it out again. Again, using that water pen to blend out that. Going in and put now I'm going to begin working on the clownfish. Putting those whites down first because those are always harder to get on there once you have other colors in there. Just wanted to make sure that was going to show up. Accidentally bumped my camera there. Sorry for that. Going in with that white pencil, that Derwent, now I've got my Derwent Chinese drawing white pencil because it, it's a little bit more opaque and it will show up a lot better than just the white pencil from the watercolor pencils. Now going in and laying in those dark areas for the fish, for, on that clownfish, putting in the shadows around him. 
continuing to look at that reference photo and seeing where those are. Now going in and putting down that orange and I'm adding some blue in there for shadows and reflecting of the water. Now blending that out. Now moving over to the other fish. I forget which one this is, which, what it's called. I want to say a lionfish, but I don't think that's what it is. I can't remember what it's called. Putting down the base, which is a light blue color. Now I'm going in there with that orange or black. Or I'm sorry, that's a more of a brownish orange. Getting out my water pen, fixing it, filled it up with some more water, blending those lines out. Drying it. Now going in and filling in that eye. Putting in those details, defining some lines. And continuing to check that reference photo, looking at where those darks are, where they need to go. Coming in and putting some highlights on the, with the yellow, put, adding some yellow to that. Because the edge of his fins were a really light yellow, bright color. Now coming back in and adding some more detail. Going back over with the orange again on the gold clownfish, brightening up those oranges, darkening them up. Now coming in and putting in some highlights on the other fish. Sorry about the camera moving around so much. Well, there's that finished piece of the fish bowl and the fish from the kitten piece that we did a while back and um, that we started on. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and picked up some some things from it, learned some things um, that will help you out with your artwork. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Hey, wait, don't go yet. I still have more to tell you. First of all, make sure that you click on that like button so that y'all know that you like this video and that you want to see more. Also, click on that subscribe button if you haven't already done it to make sure that you know when I have upcoming videos and to keep up with all my future videos.